What's up guys? Today we'll be checking out Top Gun Maverick on 4K Blu-ray. This of course isn't a review on how good or bad the movie is, I'm just going to share some of my thoughts on the audio and video quality. Now let's go over a few tech specs. The movie was shot in 6K using the Sony Venice IMAX certified cameras. That means it achieves the aspect ratio slash resolution and demands of IMAX's post-production facilities. So this was not shot with actual IMAX film cameras. Uh, we, we worked with Sony to develop a, uh, an IMAX quality camera that's about this big um, and only like two inches deep. So we were able to mount six of them inside the cockpit it's a uh, it's a 6K camera, so um, 6,000 pixels wide. It's a large format sensor, uh, which is bigger than a 35 millimeter sensor. Um, it's like a cinemascope, I think, is the is the you know the comparable film size. It's got a 4K DI. It's rated PG-13. Runtime is 130 minutes, and the aspect ratio is 239 by 1 and 190 by 1 for the IMAX shots. So there are black letterbox bars and full screen for those IMAX shots. And the audio is in Dolby Atmos. Let's go ahead and check out the Dolby Atmos viewer. If you don't know what the Atmos viewer is or where to get it, I'll leave a link down below in the video's description that tells you all about it. You can also find all the gear that I use for these reviews down there as well, such as the Sony X95K and the JVC NZ8. Now, if you've seen the review for Top Gun Maverick that I did use in the Cladoscape, this is gonna be pretty much exactly the same since it uses the same audio mix. Both mixes are identical, which brings us to the start of the movie when Tom's flying in the Dark Star plane. There's some pretty good effects with the wind blowing by the cockpit that you'll hear moving through the side channels, which is supposed to make it feel like you're inside the plane, so you'll be surrounded in a bubble of sound. In Chapter 5, there's a bunch of flybys when the plane's moving front to back and side to side, with that Cobra spiral move having the most movement. Now, if you couldn't tell, this mix is mostly a static mix, so there aren't a bunch of objects dynamically moving through each speaker. It's got a few moments here and there like the Cobra spiral scene, but I'd have to say about 98% of the movie is static. Aside from the aerial action, there isn't much else happening as far as aggressive surround. So I'm not sure why they used this demo so much at CES this year. It, it can't be. There's some nice lower channel ambiance, and the musical extension does give this movie a large cinematic feel. The bass response during the aerial scenes has got some strong output down to 30 hertz, so you will feel the planes rumble through your room as they take off and fly through your speakers. There's also a few explosions at the end that'll shake your house, so your subwoofers will definitely have something to do. That said, just like on the Kaleidoscape version as well, I do think that the bass could have had a bit more impact and depth, especially with that one Republic song during the beach scene. Otherwise, I thought it was somewhat underwhelming, especially for a big action movie. If you're new to the channel and you're into new movies and audio and video gear and want to see more content like this, be sure to tap the subscribe button for new weekly videos. Now onto video quality, as mentioned earlier, this does include the full IMAX shots for most of the aerial scenes, which happen in parts of chapters 2, 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Keep in mind that this movie was not shot with actual IMAX film cameras, so you won't get that increase in sharpness and clarity when the scene switches to full screen, like you see in a lot of Nolan movies. In this movie, whether it's a regular shot or an IMAX shot, the clarity and resolution remain consistent throughout, which means that this movie is 4K crispy from start to finish. The movie's so detailed, I can see the translucent texture in Tom Cruise's teeth and just how large his pores are on his face. You can even read the tag on his flight suit when he goes into the diner in Chapter 2. That's how detailed this transfer is. And because it is so detailed, there are some CG effects, namely the F-14, does look a bit off in certain shots. Remember, there are no F-14s that are flying nowadays. But most of the digital effects blend in seamless. As for the HDR, the movie's got a max CLL of 617 and a max fall of 496. It's not a crazy bright movie like Aquaman, nor is it dim like Free Guy, so I'd say it falls between the two. The color palette is very natural with a slightly warmish and natural tone, so you won't be blown away by heavily saturated colors like an Aquaman. And unlike those movies, the specular highlights aren't of the eye-blinding variety. They've got some nice pop when things are blowing up or when the sun is beaming through the background, just don't go in expecting this to push your TV's brightness levels. As for shadow detail and black levels, it looked fantastic on both my displays. It's not a really dark movie, but I never saw any loss of detail in the shadows or anything being crushed in the darker scenes. Overall, this is a great quality transfer on both 4K Blu-ray and on the Cladoscape. That said, for video quality, it looks the same as it did on the Cladoscape, so I'm going to keep it at 9.9. .9. It's reference quality. 
There's some CGI that looks a little off, but other than that, this is an impeccable transfer. It's one of the cleanest, sharpest transfers I've seen this year without looking overly digital while still remaining a filmic cinematic feel. The IMAX shots are intact and the HDR is tastefully done that's neither too hot or too dim. For audio, I originally gave it a 9.1 on the Cladoscape, which I think was overly generous. If I was to compare it to Midway, which also has a ton of aerial scenes with planes flying everywhere, I think there's better separation from the effects from speaker to speaker. That's not to say this isn't a great sounding movie, because it is, I just felt it wasn't as precise with surround localization. High channels get plenty of usage, and the subwoofer hits hard during certain parts, but I thought it could have been a lot better. So I'm gonna change it from a 9.1 to an 8. All in all, this is a must-have 4K Blu-ray if you want to show off your display, since it is 4K crispy with a pretty good audio mix. So what are your thoughts on Top Gun Maverick on 4K Blu-ray? Have you seen it, and do you think it's the best-looking movie this year? Is it better than Ambulance? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Now, if you do want to grab this movie, I'll leave a link for it down below in the video's description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you want, you can follow us on social media. And if you want to support the channel and get exclusive content or great discounts on audio and video gear, then stop our Patreon page. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again in the next video.